Hello everybody. This is something pretty different from our other videos. This is a 100 days challenge as you guys probably saw with the thumbnail and the title. Now I know this type of challenge is super used up on YouTube nowadays, but I wanted to have a go on it since, you know, I'm kind of new to this whole thing. Well, technically not new, but new to the actual YouTube game. And I wanted to do it on one of my own personal favorite games and one of the games I'm decently good at, Don't Starve. My original plan was, of course, to do this on Ark Survival Evolved. However, I wanted to test the waters, so to speak, to see if you guys even like these highly edited videos before dedicating the massive amount of time to an Ark 100 Days videos. Because if you guys don't know, an Ark 100 Days would absolutely pale in comparison to this. I mean, 100 Days here is like, uh, 800, or, yeah, 800 ish minutes or so, which is a lot. And it's a massive amount. But ARC would be insane if you counted like regular days. <laughs> so, yeah. N would not be fun. Anyways, if it is something you would like to see, go ahead and leave a comment because, hey, if this, if this really does well, I will put in the time to make an ARC one. Speaking of time dedication, before we get started here, I just want to inform you guys on how much effort this video actually took. Obviously, not only did I have to record around a whopping 800 minutes of gameplay, each day in Don't Starve is around 8 minutes. I also had to record a proper voiceover for each and every day. This alone took well over 30 hours of work, so if you appreciate the work done on this video, please feel free to let me know in the comments section. Although this video took a lot of work, it was incredibly fun to make, so I would love to make another video just like this if you guys enjoy it. Another thing I want to let you guys know is that the full experience of these 100 days will be released in a daily pattern after this video comes out. I did record each, each and every one of these with commentary. So, for example, day 1 through 10 will come out the day after this video is released. Day 11 through 20 will be released the day after that. You get the gist. These videos will be 100% unedited, so if you want to play along or just want to watch my live reaction to every event, you can do so with that miniseries. Now back to the challenge. This will be a standard 100 days challenge. If we see that 100 day mark, we win. However, we will throw some fun challenges in as well. Let's go over the rules first, however. Rule number one, Reign of Giants only. This is a 100 days Reign of Giants run, meaning we can only use Reign of Giants items, and we'll have the other two DLCs, Shipwrecked and Hamlet, disabled. If anything related to these spawn via glitches, we must ignore them. Now, spoiler alert, I had to add this in later because something did end up spawning in via glitches. Not sure why, but we ignored it, and we successfully did it that. Rule number two, we must not die period you will see me use touchstones throughout this playthrough these technically do give you the ability to respawn however if we did die i would consider the run voided it's a surviving 100 days challenge not a respawning 100 days challenge though if we do die i will finish out the 100 days just to finish out the video however if we die i'm not counting it as a win now that's it for the mandatory rules. I know it's basic, but this is also my first 100 days video, so I'm still learning. If this video ends up being enjoyed, I will increase the difficulty for future 100 days videos, no matter what game they happen to be on. Now, onto our character and challenges. Our character is gonna be Wilson. What better to do a basic 100 days run than on the most basic survivor himself? Wilson is a basic character of Don't Starve, and we will have no bonuses, but also no downside playing as him. Now to challenges. Challenge one will be to complete the Teleportato. The Teleportato consists... Ooh, sorry guys, I had a little hiccup there. Consists of five items all scattered around the map on spawn, and is seen as a traditional way to beat the game. It involves finding the frame, which is surrounded by incredibly dangerous mobs, known as set pieces, and bringing four items, the ring thing, the box thing, the lever thing, and the metal potato thing. Lots of things we need to bring to it. Once combined, these will merge together, creating the teleportato, and by then, this challenge will be complete. 
Challenge number two. Defeat an ancient guardian. Now I said a ancient guardian. There are multiple. Uh, this is a non-seasonal boss that always spawns in an incredibly difficult maze in the ruins, which is already incredibly hard to get to. This challenge is to beat one of them, but if we have enough time, I'll give myself bonus points for defeating multiple. Challenge number three. Fight and defeat every single boss we spawn, whether it's something as small as a tree guard or Deerclops himself. If it's a boss, we must eventually fight and successfully kill it before the 100-day mark. Tactical retreats are allowed as long as the boss is dead before that day mark goes to 100. That finishes the challenge section of this intro. Now, we don't have much further to explain, so let's go ahead and get into our first day. Day one started with us being incredibly thankful that RNG decided to give us an autumn spawn. If you don't know, on default settings, which is what we have, you have a chance to spawn in either autumn or spring. Spring spawns are infinitely harder than autumn spawns, as not only must you deal with the constant storms, which means lightning strikes, and the sanity drain that comes with being soaking wet, you know, nobody likes to be standing out in the rain, you also have to worry about the upcoming summer, which is, in my opinion, the worst of the two seasons in the game that are considered extreme, such as winter and summer. Now onto the actual day itself. We did some pretty generic stuff, collecting resources and whatnot, until we stumbled across a set piece. I then completely forgot about the contents of the chest, and we don't use this set piece at all for the entire challenge like some goobers. After that, we do some more resource collecting. We also murder some butterflies. I'm unsure why, but their wings are an incredibly good source of both food and health. I've never eaten butterfly wings in real life and don't plan to, but if Klein knows something that we don't, maybe we should get on it. After spending most of the day traveling, we start collecting some gold from rocks scattered around. This lasts well into the night, and we end day one completely mobile. This also reminds me to let you guys know, I did play through each of these days in one single play session. Yeah, that's right. I was on Don't Starve from 10 in the morning to around 4 in the morning. There was no reason for me to do this. The game has a saving feature, after all. It was a personal challenge, but as you'll notice, around day 80 or so, my mental decline becomes a little noticeable in gameplay. So, there's that. Day 2 was here and we start by finding a graveyard. This is completely ignored, even though it's an amazing source of gold once we do discover the Pig King. After a little searching, we run into a wormhole. Now, despite its scary appearance and how it definitely looks like something you'd rather not jump into, I mean, it's an undulating hole filled with teeth that... Ugh. They are incredibly useful. They act like teleporters that only cost a little bit of sanity, so we do what any normal person would do and we jump in. On the other side, things seem normal until we find not only a Mac Tusk camp, which will come in handy during winter, we also find a set piece. This was no ordinary set piece, though. This was the Teleportato base. So we had successfully found one of the five pieces we needed to complete the Teleportato. I can't get over that name, man. Teleportato. Whew. <laughs> what a genius name. We also take the big robot that was in the center, known as the Rook, for a run around the forest to cut some trees down for us. This leads us to getting some good wood, but unfortunately we take our first relatively nasty hit. And now we were much weaker and realized we needed to maybe be a little bit more careful this time. After retreating from the scene, we decide to spend the rest of the evening collecting green mushrooms, which are a powerful sanity management item, and some berries, also a powerful food management item. In the middle of the night, we saw a small battle only through text and sounds. We knew that we could do nothing but wait for day, however, as darkness was enveloping us. We ended day two very similar to how day one ended, with a torch in hand. Ooh, day three. Day three was a potentially run-ending day. First, we headed north into the desert, ignoring the battle that we previously bore witness to. Not sure why, guess I just forgot. After hiking a little bit upwards, we encountered some hounds. This, however, was a mistake that we almost did not escape from. 
Normally, you can easily outrun hounds, however, these hounds decided to use a very sinister trick that you will see here. Okay, let's not get stunlocked here. Holy hound, man. Oh no. Oh wow, okay. They had speed boost. They were speed boosting each other to hit us. Wow, that yeah. was- we took some hits. And we were only saved by the road, but now we were badly damaged and still had many days to go. After this, we found another set piece. This one included some tree guards and a miner's helmet. The helmet was amazing, however, the tree guards had to be dealt with before with day 100. And yeah, we would be back for that. Checking out the battlefield from yesterday, finally, don't know how I forgot about this before, we found that there was some free food on the ground after taking a bite from a vulture who was kind of offended that I took the ham off the ground. Not sure why. Guess he was planning on eating it first. We escaped, badly beaten, out of the desert. In the evening now, we find the Pig King, a very vital piece in the puzzle of Don't Starve. He would allow us to sell trinkets and meat to him for gold. We also find some beefalo in the savanna to the north. This would be useful for hound attack defense and collecting manure, as fun as that sounds. In the same savanna, we run into the parrot. Yeah, I'm also unsure how he got here. Shipwrecked and Hamlet are disabled, so it made no sense to see him here, as he is a shipwrecked item. But we can safely ignore him. We end the night camped around another wormhole we discovered, with plans to enter it in the following morning. Day 4 started with us jumping into the same wormhole we just discovered, and we ended up in a plains biome. After a little walking, we finally decided to set down a science machine. After that, we used said science machine to craft a backpack, some rope, and a spear with that rope. We also wanted to make a football helmet to protect our squishy low health head, however we need an alchemy engine for that. We set out to gather some wood. One of the ingredients for the alchemy engine was four boards, and for that we need four wood per board. Quite expensive, if you ask me. While cutting, however, three very angry birch trees became hostile. We decided to cheese them by walking away and returning to cut them down. For some reason, this causes them to lose all aggro. So, out of it, we got some easy living logs and nightmare fuel, as well as tons of birch nuts. Later in the evening, we finally had all four boards. We then made four cut stones and used two of those cut stones to make two electrical doodads. What a funny little name for a piece of equipment. And with that, we could finally make an alchemy engine. But we didn't place it down, we wanted to save it for our main base. Our first rain started. Luckily, this was autumn and rains would be mostly limited to a drizzle. However, you could get storms, so we were praying that this was not that. And while running around, we found the set piece containing the box thing. We would mark its location as that was a piece to the teleportato. Night was upon us, and we decided to make a fire for the night this time instead of staying mobile. We needed food, and food was best used cooked. While waiting, however, we accidentally discovered a light. After further investigating it, it was a group of protective, angry pigs. We kept our distance for the rest of the night. Day 5 had started and I noticed something was a little different about Wilson. Our beard had started to grow. This was Wilson's only superpower compared to the other characters, and while it's not game changing, a long beard in winter will keep us moderately warmer, so we planned to grow it out throughout autumn. We admired the pig's massive berry farm, wishing we had some, before heading north past many different beehives, straight to another wormhole. We decided to, of course, jump into it. That's the same thing to do. This wormhole led right to the pig village, a very useful jump across the river that we normally could not pass. After going north a little bit from the wormhole, we found the ring thing. Three out of five things to make the teleportado down. Only two more to go. After following the brick road a bit north, we eventually ran into a secondary pig village. This, funny enough, would be one of the only times we visit this village in this entire run. Sorry, pig bros. Night was upon us again, except we stayed mobile with our miner's hat this time. The increase of light was significantly better. The goal was to find tall birds, since I love to base near them for easy food. If you guys don't know, killing them drops two big pieces of meat, 
as well as you can pick up their egg, which lasts indefinitely as long as you store it correctly. But we had no such luck. Day six started with us debating where to live. I kid you not, I spent a solid few minutes doing this, sitting on the map screen. It'll all be in the unedited version if you really want to watch me debating with myself. <laughs> Guess that's how I say it. We decided to hold off on settling down until we found a more favorable area, and our search for one brought us to another piece of the teleportato, the metal potato thing. I guess that's where it gets its name. This meant we had one more thing to find before everything was ready. We also did find a gnome. This would come in handy much later down the road, I promise. After some contemplating, we decided to get started on our winter base for Krampus and Mactus farming. However, because we wouldn't be staying there now, as it was not winter, we decided to head out and explore. Explore... a lot. Yeah. After lots of exploring, we run into the final piece of the teleportato, the lever thing. Meaning now, whenever the platform was clear of all hostiles, we would be able to complete the teleportato, and thus completing one of our many challenges of this run. The day, however, ended quite anticlimactically, as we were just chilling in the swamp cooking green caps to stay sane. Day 7 starts with us collecting some gears from a fallen knight and then directly leading to the death of another knight via Swamp Tentacle Clobbering. What a creative phrase. We also take his gears. The tentacles show their power as we come across many spider graveyards. We take this as a serious sign to avoid them and get out as fast as possible. We spend even more time on the map screen debating where to live. It was day seven and we had no permanent home site and that needed to change. While wandering, however, we killed a turkey. I absolutely hate these guys. They steal your berries and are all around just jerks. So, he deserved it. Oh yeah, and we killed a knight. Pretty cool, right guys? Wandering around aimlessly, but feeling great at my triumph in the latest battles, we eventually settle on a nice spot near the swamp, and near the wormhole that takes us to the winter base. We started building up, starting with a fire pit, then the alchemy engine we previously built, and we set our gnome down. Again, he would become very important later on. Don't forget him, guys. And from there on out, we spent the rest of the night cooking food. Day 8 started with us building a chest to store our valuables, and store our valuables we did. Finally, some real progress. On topics of storage as well, we created an ice box, which is the refrigerator of Don't Starve. It would keep our food good for much, much longer. Now onto tools. We first made a torch because we needed charcoal, and what better way to do it than do arson on an entire forest? We then upgraded our tools to golden ones, making a shovel, a pickaxe, and an axe. We then headed out to do some chopping. Until... why not? Let's go ahead and use up this axe completely. There we go. Whoa! Okay, guys. You guys ready for boss fight? Day 8? Two. One, two. Okay, it's three. One, two, three. Yeah, it's three. One, two, 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 three. Lost fight on day, guys. How wonderful is that? <laughs> Now, as long as I don't mess up my timing at all, I should do this completely damageless. Three. He does have a massive amount of health, though, so it's gonna be it's gonna be quite the fight, and it is gonna break down our poor spear. One, two, three. One, two, three. Man, come on. One, two, three. He's also gonna drain our sanity. 
which I'm not too much of a fan of. I hit a four. Oh, okay. I got away with a four. Maybe I can do four. Okay, okay, maybe if I go south. There we go. Just like that, he has fallen. As you guys saw there with my live reaction, I wasn't so worried. And for good reason. Tree guards are probably the easiest bosses we will run into during this challenge. They may hit hard and look scary, but their attack pattern is basic and low range. So we make quick work of them. We then spent the remainder of the day digging saplings to replant and burning down acres of endangered force for our own greedy survival needs. Day 9 was our first somewhat uneventful day. I collected lots of charcoal, we then hammered some of the farms we found down for the manure and grass. Then spent pretty much the entire rest of the day collecting more manure and grass. Really sounds like a fun time. Once night hit, however, a full moon was here. This allowed us to hammer the pig head skewers, whatever you want to call them, kebabs. And instead of only getting pig skin and twigs, we also get some easy nightmare fuel, which is only available during a full moon. Day 10 was the day where we began to spread out and increase our influence over this world. We first started with a resource run, and during said resource run, we opened a sinkhole. This sinkhole would allow us to enter the caves, which not only held the fuel for our miner's helmet, but also the ancient guardian, which we would inevitably need to fight to complete one of our challenges. We then went back home for a little base prep. We planted the saplings to the north, made a drying rack, Spoiler alert, it never gets used because I'm forgetful. And finally, made a crock pot, which did get used a lot, and probably was the reason that we were alive most of the time. After collecting some gear, I had noticed my beard had gotten longer. This was epic, and to celebrate this epic occasion, we decided to jump into a hole in the ground. Nothing too interesting happened in the caves, but for the remainder of day 10, we mined some stalagmites and fought killer bats. Our miner's hat, however, was becoming very low on fuel. We needed to find light bulbs, and soon. Even without a day counter in the top corner, I could still technically log days by listening carefully for the day chime. This meant day 11 had started. Our low fuel forced me to make a torch. I did not want to use a torch since it had such a low burn time and small field of view. In desperation I juggled the miner's helmet, but clearly it did not seem to work as the durability went down almost at the same rate, if not even faster, and eventually we were forced to use the torch. Now, after some more running, um, here in my notes it said, made fire because hungry. So I'm sure you guys can deduce what that meant. <laughs> Afterwards, we ran around desperately looking for light bulb plants. Until Ooh, we've got a cave in. How wonderful be the sound. We've got Battlisk. Very annoying. We've also got spiders. Whoa, guys, we're, we're not having a good time. We are not having a good time. Ow! That marble just hit me on the head. Okay, we're okay. Dude, please. Okay. We can just face tank these guys here. They don't do a lot of damage. But they they do like to avoid taking damage is the only issue. There we go. Okay. After the danger, the light of the end of the tunnel shone and shined. How do you even say that? English is weird, man. Anyways, we found light bulbs and that meant we could finally replenish our miner's hat fuel. We of course weren't alone down here. The caves were also home to the aggressive vegetarians known as the bunny men. Normally they are chill with you, but if you have any meat-based item in your inventory, they will chase you down with a passion and stop at nothing to kill you for your crime of owning some meat. We obey their vegetarian regime this time and drop our only meat, a uh, measly monster meat, so they can be chill with us. Deeper in the cave we find a huge mushroom biome, I mean absolutely massive, and with it came a huge field of light bulbs. Things were getting bright, literally and metaphorically. A little further, 
we found some cave spiders, who are much more scary than their surface-dwelling cousins. One can spit acid, and one has an almost impenetrable shell. Thankfully, they both have one fatal weakness. Traps. So we farmed them and broke their homes to make the ruins entrance, which was nearby a little safer. The day chime, however, cut our day short. And thus started day 12. On day 12, we experienced another earthquake and survived with no damage. We also continued farming the cave spiders to clear the entire area and took one unfortunate hit before wiping them from the cave. We then came across a nightmare rift that was active in spawning nightmare creatures. Normally, these creatures only appear at low sanity. However, due to the rift's status, they could attack us at high sanity. So, we really needed to deal with that. We then escaped the cave with incredibly low stats. As you guys can see, we're hungry, low health, and almost insane. And to make matters worse, it immediately began raining as soon as we exited the cave. We then made some meatballs and prepared to farm the pigmen with monster meat. What does this mean, you may ask? Simple. When a pigman is fed four monster meat, he will transform into a werepig. This werepig not only is aggressive and easier to kite, he will also be guaranteed to drop two meat and a pig skin, which is what we want. So we grabbed eight monster meat and made our way over there in the cover of nighttime, leading us into the events of day 13. On day 13, we jumped into the wormhole leading near the pig village. However, instead of targeting the pig village, we go after a rural pig known as Donut. Unfortunately, Donut decided fighting a bishop would be more fun than converting for us, so we help him fight the bishop before converting him and killing him. Another poor pig named Vespasian, I guess, weird name for a pig, unfortunately receives the same fate, leaving us with four big pieces of meat and two incredibly useful pig skins. We also take this time to clear out the Telepotato platform and take out a knight. Unfortunately, being around so many evil creatures causes us to go insane fully, and we have to fight nightmare monsters to stay sane. Later into the day, we discover that our rook friend was missing, which of course made us sad since he could no longer be farmed for wood. However, in the middle of our grieving, we also heard a low grunting noise. This noise was familiar to me. It's a hound attack warning sound. We would need to quickly prepare for this battle, and that's what we did. We made short work of the hounds. While they were underwhelming, our sanity was still draining and we had to retreat to the home site, where we spent the remainder of our day eating butterfly wings to heal and fighting nightmare creatures. We start day 14 completely full and in good health, but unfortunately quite insane. We unplug the sinkhole to the south of our base with the intention of spelunking to find some more light bulbs for our miner's helmet. However, we can't go in immediately, so we head back to base camp to gather some more vital supplies before finally jumping into the cave. We fall right next to a spider nest and see light bulbs in the distance. We start our caving adventure by farming the spiders with traps for some easy silk, spider sacks, and monster meat. We then spend a few seconds hitting the den to break it, and unfortunately these things have a massive health pool, and I mean massive. Even with a spear, it takes us quite a while. We then move north to explore the light bulb rich region of the cave. During this, however, we experience the effects of our diminished sanity and have to fight more nightmare monsters, a sign that we really need to get this issue under control. Our travels also led us to some bunny men, the aggressive vegetarians that we found in the last cave. We are mostly able to ignore them while we travel, collecting berries and visiting rock lobsters until we hear the daytime. Day 14 was at an end. Day 15 begins in the caves, and a scary part of the caves at that, the swamp part, with aggressive tentacles and large spider nests everywhere. We don't stay long, however, as we make our way out of the cave a short period after the day has begun. Back at home, we cook and eat more beautiful meatballs, and cook and eat some green caps, which have an amazing effect of restoring sanity tremendously when cooked. And I just love how the filter goes from chaotic to peaceful and calm. We were then cut a few trees down before converting our neighbor Pickles into a werepig and killing him for his hide meats. The rest of the night is dedicated to farming materials, namely stone and wood. And that would lead us to day 16. Day 16 starts with us forgetting to take our miner helmet off, 
leading to unneeded burning of fuel, but we also decided to plant a force next to the pig village. It was around this time when I actually realized that we were wearing the miner's helmet, and I said to myself, wow, I'm stupid. You guys will get to enjoy that if you do watch the full thing. Nothing else too interesting happens during this day, as we mostly dedicate it to resource harvesting. However, we do pick up the ring thing, which is part of the telepotato, and get a sizable amount of green cabs for sanity management. Day 17 starts with us cooking a meaty stew, one of the most filling cooking recipes in the entire game. It can take you from zero hunger to 250 hunger, at least in the case of Wilson. However, this day unfortunately was equally as uneventful as day 16. We did attempt to fight a tentacle and got whacked more than I would have liked, but yeah, it, 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 it was an experience, we'll just say that. We also did go and grab the box thing before traveling for the rest of the night. Day 18, while not too exciting, was very productive. We did get a lot more done during this day. But first, we spent some time lollygagging at the base for an unreasonable amount of time. I'm actually not quite sure why I was sitting around the base for so long. But afterwards, we planted the spider nest in the north of our house for easy monster meat, and then prepared to finish one of our challenges, finishing the teleportato. We decided while we were over by it, we would uh, also finish our winter base so that we could farm Krampus and Mac Tusk with ease. We then took the wormhole over and finished the teleportato. One of our more easy challenges, after that, we placed an ice box and a crock pot, and then a little north of our winter fire pit, we also planted a tent for some easy night skipping during boring winter nights. After that, we lit our fire and spent the night at our new winter stronghold. Day 19 started with us at our winter base. We then went to our neighbor Chip and, yeah. You guys know what we did to Chip. After that, our luck was up as we got some butter from a butterfly, a very rare alternative drop from murdering butterflies and one that would help us keep our health up. We then decided to plant some birch trees when we noticed some were losing their leaves, which meant one thing, winter was coming. And with that, it would mean we would almost be locked to a fire, so we had to move to our winter base quick, and that's exactly what we spent the remainder of the day doing. Day 20 started at our winter base, however, winter was not here yet. We knew for sure it would be coming tomorrow then, so we used this time wisely and farmed monster meat from spiders for a majority of the day to use for emergency winter meatballs. However, during our travels we ran into something that would help us farm Krampus tremendously easier, a feather hat. The feather hat increases the spawn of birds by a noticeable margin, and birds will be essential to the farming method. Of course, I will explain why when the time comes. For now, we struggle against nightmare creatures on our very last day of autumn. Day 21 marked the first day of winter, and with it we knew things were now going to become much tougher. We checked our friend Magtus's home site, and unfortunately he was not here yet. We then went back to our base to create a thermal stone and learn how to make boomerangs, another pivotal part of Krampus farming. After that we hop in the wormhole and prepare to make ourselves cozy in our new winter zone. However, someone beats us there. It's Mac Tusk. Luckily we make short work of his hounds, however we are frozen in the process. Afterwards we run him down and kill him. Unfortunately no walrus tusk this time, but we would be looking out for it eventually. Then, in an effort to raise our sanity, I make the executive decision to sleep through the night, ending our day early. Day 22 brought along the very first snow with it, and for the rest of the day, we farm for Krampus. Now, because we're going to be doing this for the next few days, I believe I do owe you all an explanation about like why we're farming Krampus. Krampus is a hostile mob in this game who spawns when your naughtiness reaches a certain threshold. Naughtiness is increased for killing innocent mobs, such as birds, butterflies, even glomer, and other passive mobs. Each mob gives a different level of naughtiness. Birds, however, are the most abundant of the mobs that increase naughtiness and give you a sizable amount per kill. 
Krampus will also warn the player of their naughtiness with a hissing sound. Now, while I would love to play this sound for you guys, unfortunately I could not find the file available for download anywhere. It is, however, noticeable in the actual recording that I have, so if you guys did want to hear it, it's it'll be available in, I believe, two days after this video, when I start getting the actual live recordings out. Now, why farm Krampus, you may ask? Well, we're farming him for his sack. The sack on his back, that is. <laughs> it is a very rare backpack that can drop from killing him sometimes, and I would love to have it as a trophy for when we won our 100 days challenge. Of course, due to winter limiting our abilities, this is actually what we end up doing for many days, especially since we have already dealt with the hound attack today. So we should be clear for the next nine-ish days. And it was a very small hound attack, so nothing too serious. In fact, who knows if I'll even show it here. You guys know what's going on now. So what you guys are about to witness is the sped up version of the remainder of day 22, all the way until something interesting does happen on the morning of day 26. So enjoy, guys. Day 26 starts, and before we can even get up, Mactus makes his way over to us. A call to arms. We deal with his dogs while attempting to take as little damage as possible, and luckily we survive. We then chase him far north and corner him. With nowhere left for him to run, we easily slay him and claim his tusk. 
This would become very useful when spring came and we went back home for the rest of the year. After this, however, we go back into Krampus farming mode. After farming Krampus for so long and not getting lucky, we get another Magtus spawn. 
Realizing that I already got what I needed from him, I began to regret basing so close to him, but it was too late. The battle luckily came out on our side, and we immediately got back to Krampus farming. However, Krampus must have gotten tired of our shenanigans, as instead of spawning him, once evening came, something much more sinister decided to show up. What you guys will be watching from here on out, until the situation is resolved, is my live reaction to this very fun occurrence. There he is. Can we get him? My bet is probably, but it's going to be very close tonight. <gasps> He's here. He is here. You see what Wilson just said there, guys? This is huge. Okay. Um, this is insanely huge, guys. We've only got a few minutes. Well, not even a few minutes. We've... We've not got long to prepare. Okay, I need, I need, I need, I need to put this away. Put this away, I need cut grass. Um, I need another spear, I need another spear, I need another spear. We can throw this boomerang in here. I need another spear. And I need the green caps. All right. Oh, dude, do you hear him? He is vicious sounding. We need to run as far away as we possibly can from the home site here. Let's just get as far away as physically possible. Yep, I think we get one more warning and then he spawns. Let's get pretty far. Alright. This feels like we're good enough here feels good enough. Let's cook up as much of these as we can. Oh boy. This is it, guys. This is it. Let's get as much as we can on this fire as possible, too. Make it big and bright so it'll keep us warm. <sighs> Here goes nothing. Where is he? There he is, guys. There he is. Let's do this. I think we can do three. Can we do three? We can do three. All right. Ooh, that's close. Oh, God, dude. We are taking this guy down. One, two, three. We gotta go vertical. We gotta stay within the fire. And as you see, he is draining our sanity at an insane rate. We are going insane. Oh my goodness. One, two, three. Oh, that was a hit. That hurts, man. Even with a football helmet, it just absolutely decimates. Come on. Come on. Three. One, two, three. If we start going, uh, if we start getting nightmares, I'm gonna go ahead and pop some. Ow! Ooh! Okay, that's bad. Two hits in a row. Okay, we've got some nightmares. Let's pop some. We gotta deal with these nightmares at the same time. Yes! Yes! Okay, okay. Let's deal with these nightmares. Terror Beak plus, uh, whatever you call that thing. Okay, okay. Juggle these guys. Juggle these guys around. We are hurting a little bad. I'm not gonna lie. If you look at our health there. But overall, we could be doing way worse. Actually, more worried about this terror beak. Yeah, he's gonna get a good hit on there. Oh, dude, he hurts bad. Oh, he hurts so bad. Okay, actually. Actually, here's the play. Oh, we need 
need to heal. Oh, he's gone. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We need this eyeball. Okay, we're still insane. We're still insane. We need to get home and we need to... Oh, dude. We can't sleep yet, though. We can't sleep yet. Let's try to at least... That's going to hurt us a little bit. These green caps do do one health of damage. But I'm hoping we just need to stay out of insanity. Near death, insane, and halfway starved. That's what we were on the start of day 32. After a tremendous battle with our first seasonal boss, Deerclops. We made a meaty stew and ate it to fill up fully and prepared to sleep through the night after making another meaty stew to eat for breakfast. Day 33 was spent Krampus farming. Here's a fun sped up look on how it went. On day 34, we finally began moving back home. And once we got home, we immediately began getting the resources necessary to make a Deerclops Eyes unique item. The Eyebrella. It would be incredibly useful come spring as it makes wetness a non-issue and will save us lots of sanity drain in the near future. We finished the day off by making a bunch of emergency meaty stews, and then throughout the night we made our way down to the pig town to farm some wood. Day 35 marked the final day of winter, and we were preparing by heading to the pig village to make them do some manual labor. After we were done cutting a majority of the trees down, we replanted and placed a campfire to spend the night. All was going well, until... Oh man, alright, let's uh, let's get this fire a little brighter. <gasps> Crap. Oh. Oh, good heavens. No! I just said I would never put it. Wow, dude. After the tragic accident last night, spring was finally here. However, for the first few days, the chilliness would still be around, as with spring in real life. But it meant progress could be made. And progress did get made. We dug up some rabbit holes to trap four rabbits and brought them back home to stuff them in a hat and make a Presta Hatitator. After that, we used the Presta Hatitator to make a Shadow Manipulator. Using this, we would be able to make Dark Swords, an amazing weapon. Now, day 37 is an interesting one. We started by preparing for a spelunking adventure, and spelunk we did. Once in the mines, however, we decided to go deeper, and after gathering some light bulbs, we took the plunge into the ruins. The ruins were scary and dark, but we persevered because one of our goals was to kill the ancient guardian residing down here. After some searching and fighting nightmare monsters, we ran into the maze, which is home of the boss we must fight. Afterwards, we found him. And this is how it went down. What do we got in here? We have a bat bat. Not really worth it, to be honest. Not really worth it at all. Ooh. I think. That's this is the place. Alright. Holy mother of Neptune! Okay, this guy is dangerous. I know we technically could he he could one shot us, dude. We've gotta be careful about this.
We also should just switch this out. If we're going to take a hit, we want a 100% football field to take that hit. Oh, dude. Hold on. Hold on. I've got a... Okay, I've got a... I just need to, like... I, I, um... I have a plan, guys. Holy jeebus. Okay, he's trapped right now. We need to remember where he's at. I have a massively powerful plan. And this was a plan I was sure would work. We were going to use the power of flint and capitalism to take this beast down. Also, when I said he would one-shot us, I was not wrong. Any of those dashes could have ended the run because the Ancient Guardian does a whopping 100 damage. However, we survived and that wasn't anything to worry about at the moment. We ascended up to the regular caves and met with some rock lobsters who we generally offered some flint in return for their loyalty. We then descended again, this time with our army. Unfortunately, this move almost cost us the run. You guys are so cool. I love you guys so much. Alright, let's chill around a fire for a little bit. Get our wetness down. Uh, the nightmare cycle did just change. I don't know what to. I don't think nightmares are dangerous just yet. But we are getting to the point where they will be. Let's go ahead and load this before we get like stun locked and unable to. Alright. Alright, my friends. My friends, we go now. <laughs> oh, I love these guys so much, man. They make my life so nice. Let's, uh... No, we won't eat a meaty stew yet. Did I accidentally... No, I didn't. But where are my rock lobster friends? Oh, dude. Oh, dude, he's still just there. He's still just being freaky. Oh, my goodness, dude. Get a job. What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> okay, well, we'll bring the kill squad over. Oh, dude, they're already ready. They are, they are ready to go. They are ready to get this guy... Okay, Nightmare Cycle just did something. Protect me, friends. Dude, he's so big! Oh yeah, you pissed off the herd now, guys. Okay, the Nightmares are aggressive right now. Wait, he didn't piss off the herd? There we go. They're mad, but they're just not... They're just not fighting him. Okay, okay. Alright, dude, we're dealing with our own demons right now. Holy crap. Uh... Holy crap. I did not realize that... Oh, Jesus. We failed. Yeah. And after being forced out of the cave by the army of nightmare creatures, we know how to deal with our own insanity. So before rushing back to our base, we waited into daytime so we could have a better vision on the nightmare creatures trying to kill us. Day 40 started with a mad dash back home, all while having literally zero sanity in a soaking wet backpack. Most of the day after we made it back home was dedicated to sanity management, so we collected some flowers and green caps and it ended with us camping out in the swamp. Day 41 started much better than its predecessor. Our only complaint was having a somewhat diminished stomach, but unfortunately, the day itself was quite uneventful. We farmed some wear pigs and created some blow darts. These would come in handy later. And once night came around, it was a full moon. 
so we spent it cutting down some green mush trees for extra sanity management. Nothing interesting really happened at all on day 42. We collected a few more mush trees and made some meatballs. That was about it. Things got a little more interesting on day 43, however, because we needed to confirm that the ancient guardian was dead. So we suited up and rushed into the caves. Luckily, we made it into the ruins with little resistance, but the battle was not over there. When we made it to the maze, anxiety was in every step because I was afraid of a raging horned beast popping out of the darkness. Then we rounded a corner and... He was dead. Our mission was a success. But of course we needed to confirm it for it to count, so that was both of our timed missions out of the way. Now all we needed to complete the run was to successfully fight each and every boss that we spawned. The rest of the trip was a little uneventful. We fought a slurper, encountered a pond filled area, and finally found a freaky deaky statue. We were forced to retreat by the shadow cycle, causing nightmares to spawn everywhere. And as we left, we realized it is now day 44, and we were experiencing the beginning of a severe storm. And the day was almost over, so we headed over to base camp, and our lightning rod was struck by lightning. That's a fire that was successfully mitigated in a free light source, so we took advantage of it for the night. On day 45, we wore our crown triumphantly. Unfortunately, however, the only interesting thing we did all day was pick reeds from more blow darts. On day 46, we went down into the caves to get more reeds from the swamps underground. All was going well. Unfortunately, the Spider Queen spawned, and abiding by our rule of all bosses, we spawn must die, meant we were forced to fight her. Luckily, some rock lobsters were near, and we could befriend them and send them in to take care of her. Unfortunately, it was not one, but two Spider Queens. After some tactical retreating and rock lobster shenanigans, we managed to deal with them both, allowing us to stay true to our goal. We even brought some of them back up to the surface with us to end the day together. On day 47, we experienced a torrential downpour. It was raining. Buckets out there, man. Also, we spent a majority of the day preparing to move to the desert for summer. Now, while spending the summer in the desert sounds like a terrible idea, I mean, it's hot in the desert, right? It's actually one of the best places due to flowering cactuses, and the temperature is global, so it doesn't matter what biome you actually are in. Now, day 48 was not a crazy interesting day. Most of it was spent farming pigs, and near the end we realized we wanted to save our crown for our day 100 tribute area, so we replaced it with a football helmet. Sorry, crown. Day 49 put us into full prep mode for summer. We shaved our beard to help with the heat and then went around collecting more reeds. Now I'm going to explain why we need so many blow darts and that's Dragonfly. Dragonfly is a boss that can spawn in summer and is basically unkiteable, meaning if we try to fight her in melee it will result in our death 9 times out of 10, even with armor and backup armor. So the goal is to battle her from range killer without needing to land a single melee blow. We did unfortunately suffer a hound attack today, luckily they were nothing, and we dealt with them with ease. Day 50 was a prep day, and the only interesting thing that happened was a small scuffle with a stray hound in the desert. Day 51 was another prep day. Later in the day we wanted to make an ice fling matic but unfortunately we did not have enough ice and had to contest with some spiders for some ice. The spiders fought back and almost cost us the run, but luckily we got away with only minor injuries, which we actually were able to heal up there. Just uh, some food for thought. There we go. Day has been logged. What the hell just happened? That's cheating. That is cheating. Yeah, that's right. While we were breaking down a spider nest, a queen popped out. And per our rule, we now had to kill her. This led to an epic battle that can only 
properly be commentated by my live reaction. Okay. One, two, three. One, two, three. Ow. She kind of hits hard, too. One, two, three. She's gonna make a baby now. Oh, of course, that baby's gonna be a spider warrior. Why wouldn't it be, guys? Ow. Dude, we're taking too much damage here. Got a killer, though. Okay. No. Stop hitting me. Oh, we're at a 1%er. Um, we have to flee. We have to do a tactical retreat. Unless Mr. Pig can handle her for long enough. That would be awesome. But at a 1% baseball hat... This just isn't going to go well if we continue the fight. Wait. Wait, guys. The fight might go on. The fight may go on. Oh, the fight goes on, guys. All right. Let's drop this one percenter. It's just not worth it to hold on to it. All right. Bring him over here. Bring him over here. Feed him to me. Okay, that broke it. Um, we need to go to a spear. Unfortunate, but we got to. We got a terror beak. Dude, this is a huge difference in my plans. I didn't want to do all this today or really any day of that matter. But it's a good thing I'm a kiting god. Look at me go. Look at my exaggerated powers here. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay, we've got spiders to deal with. Three, two, one, two. Where are all these guys coming from? Million spiders coming out the wazoo. We have to make a tactical retreat, guys. But we did do enough damage to her that I'm fairly confident that she is not going to. Dude, these spiders are annoying. Go away, guys. Oh, wait, we have traps. What are we doing? Drop the traps. At least deal with one of them. Alright. Nope, 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 nope. Drop the trap, deal with that one. Let's get this shadow beak guy out of the way as soon as possible. Please. Perfect. Okay, nightmare fuel has been obtained. Uh really? You are making me mad right now. Good day, sir. And or madam. Really? More of you? Where are you coming from? Uh ugh. Okay. Yeah, that's right. I imprisoned your friend. Where where did you come from? You're freaky. Four, five, six. You take six to kill. Okay. Interesting conundrum. And here we go. The entire forest is now mad at me for killing one spider. Okay, dude. We need to ignore that queen for now. It's It's not our imperative to fight her just yet. After the tactical retreat, we decided to head to the house and consolidate our current resources, ending Day 52. Day 53 was an important day. We spent the early part of the day collecting light bulbs while being chased by a deaf worm in the caves. After leaving the cave, we decided to use the wormhole to get to the Spider Queen. However, we were not prepared to face the Queen's amassed army and had to once again retreat. After she chased a rock lobster up north, we snuck around to try to steal some ice, but was forced away by the current inhabitants. After all of our failures, we decided to hold up at our summer base for the night. 
On day 54, we experienced our first bout of overheating, and that was a sign that summer was coming very soon. So the bulk of the day was spent moving to our desert oasis. Day 55 started with a bang, quite literally, as our chest was shattered to pieces by a lightning strike, a fault that I could have prevented had I made a cheap lightning rod. Luckily nothing was burned, so we just had to watch it during the summer for spontaneous combustion. Yeah, that's right. Items in the summer will sometimes randomly catch flames, and we can't have that happening to our important items, it's just not something I'm willing to deal with. We also dealt with a lure plant that decided to plant itself south of our summer base. After dealing with that, we searched for the spider queen. Unfortunately, she turned herself back into a spider nest, meaning we technically failed to slay her in time. We did at least give it our all, and in my heart, I believe that's what counts. What do you guys think? Leave a comment down below. The rest of the day was spent collecting resources because a whole new beast of a season was coming. The first day of summer was quite boring. We went tumbleweed hunting and picked some flowered cactuses, but because we had pre prepared so well, we did not have to do too much throughout the day. And yeah, caused us to pretty much wait around the whole time. And that, that was not too fun of a recording to make. Day 57 was about the same. What did you expect? It's summer. However, I did make an executive decision. Because summer was the most boring and limiting season by far, and because we had so many resources stockpiled, I decided a good way to spend it would actually be able to skip as much of it as possible. So we decided to construct a siesta lean-to, which would allow us to skip the hot summer days, and then wait out the short summer nights. Afterwards, we used a tent that we also constructed to skip the remainder of day 57. Day 58 was spent with the false hope that I could be productive during summer. However, I did not feel comfortable being around our other flammable base, and we needed to make sure we could stay cool so the day ended up with us using the tent to speed up time. After this, we decided to start skipping days with the siesta lean-to to keep our sanity high and our temps low, as well as to get past this boring season. So what you guys will be seeing here is basically a sped up fun montage of our summer <laughs> I don't even know what to call this man this is this was literally what I did for almost uh, 30 minutes it was it was wild enjoy <laughs>
On the night of day 64, after taking our daily siesta, we were greeted by a hound attack. Now, hound attacks in summer are dangerous as they mean fire hounds, so we decided to lead them to the tree guards. I know, what better way to fight fire than with living trees? They were also just a short walk from our summer home, so it made it easy to get there. Luckily, even though they're made of wood, they made quite short work of them, and none of them seemed to have died, so that was a plus. After that, we continued our cycle of uh, siestas. Day 66 was here, and things were going amazing. Until we took our daily siesta, that is. What you'll be seeing now is my live reaction. And then it is time for our annual, I mean daily, not annual, our daily nap. She's coming. Oh no, dude. Oh, she is. I hope that bird's smoldering and not those seeds, too. What is smoldering over there? It's a bird, right? Please tell me it's the bird. That's yeah, the bird. Okay. We need to go. We need to evacuate right now. We have our blow darts. Um, Honestly, we have everything we really need. We have the endothermic fire pit ready to be placed down. Oh, guys, this is it. Let's head over to these guys. They'll keep us somewhat. She'll fight them. All right. That's her, dude. That is her. And she sounds pissed. Um, let's keep this really... Do you guys hear that, man? We've got the blow darts ready. We've got the blow darts on the ready. I'm hoping the tree guards at least soften her up. But there's a good chance they won't. There she is, guys. Is there a tan chance she will chill? Walla. What is she doing? What did she just- Oh, dude, she's- Hi. How's it going? Uh... I don't know what she's doing right now, but she is being freaky. Ooh, I am kind of hungry, aren't you, Wilson? She's kicking me out of my own fire here. Okay, guys. Guys, we got this. We got this. Once this daytime hits, we're going to count the day. We have got to do this. Okay. She's just going to town on these things. Let's, um...
Can I get a shot off on her? It's not giving me the X to attack. She's pissed. She's so mad, dude. Why can't I... I... I can't X to attack her. Oh no, dude. Can I get her to... S wow! Why can't I do it? The game is ruining my life. New plan. New plan. She's going to burn absolutely everything as well. To the ground, I say. Dare I say, the ground. I need to get her to directly attack the... Oh wait, here we go. She's like, kind of being less peeved off now. Okay, here's the plan. Ow, that hit. But now she's pissed off the tree guardians. Whoa! There we go, there we go. She is... Wow, she is decimating them, dude. She... She just decimated them. Ow. Oh my god, dude. What am I supposed to do? Um... Okay, I'm way faster than her. She'll follow me through wormholes. Okay, take her to the swamp. That might be a good idea, guys. That might be the way. I don't want to just ignore her. I want to fight her. But, like, what am I to do? Okay, give me some stale meatballs. She should follow me through this wormhole here. Let's hope she does. Please tell me she followed us. She didn't. Or did she? What was that little lag spike? I'm not seeing her, dude. You're gonna piss me off, aren't you? Yeah, you are, aren't you, Big Bird? Um, where did she go, actually? Where did she go? Uh, I need some of this charcoal. Like, now. Keep this fire running. Wait, where'd my fire go? Okay, good. Whew. Okay. Where did she get off to? Now, I know that's probably a lot to take in. And here's a little explanation on what I was trying to do. Obviously, the blow dart method was not working due to a ranged issue on console. For some reason, it just would not let me target the dragonfly. So my plan was to have her follow us into the swamp where we could get some tentacles to lower her health enough to properly fight, or even outright kill her. However, she for some reason did not follow me through the wormhole, although most bosses do. I've, I've had Barriger follow me through a wormhole. I've had her specifically follow me through a wormhole before. So I'm not quite sure what happened. Unfortunately, because we had gone through a wormhole, this led her to despawn. And, theoretically, that loses us the challenge outright, because we did not kill her. However, because she should have followed us through the wormhole, and she also should have not despawned, therefore, do you guys count this one as a loss? 
Leave a comment down below, I would love to hear your opinion. Either way, we now have no Dragonfly trophy, which is a real bummer. After our failure, we retreat back to our summer home and begin our siesta cycle once again to escape this awful season. Day 72 marked the second autumn and the beginning of the end. The day, however, was pretty tame as we began to move home for the season. A hound attack did manage to catch us somewhat off guard, but we still survived with really no injuries whatsoever. During the night, we ran around to enjoy the non-superheated air and gather some resources, leading us straight into day 73. Now, Day 73 was a continuation of Day 72 since we did not go to bed or anything, something I'm no longer used to because we had just spent almost an entire season simply skipping most of the time. This day did start with us cheesing some living birch nut trees. I'm still unsure whether to consider these guys bosses or not, but either way, we take them out. Afterwards, we do some base organization and then begin a spelunking adventure in which we do kill some depth worms. They were kind of overrated and easy to kill one on one. I had previously thought that they were much stronger than they actually were. And we end the day mining some stalagmites, not stalactites. These ones grow out of the ground, not over the ground. That's something I need to remember because uh, I actually called them stalactites and that was uh, not the correct pronunciation for them. But back on topic, we mine them because they can give you gold. And that ended off our day 73. Now, day 74 was supposed to be an eventful day as we attempt to find the ruins, but unfortunately we fail and we head back home to do some organizing to end the day. Day 75 starts with us fighting our werepigified neighbor 
I really wonder who did that to him. I mean, I have no clue. How, how could that even have happened to him? We were doing him a favor, kind of. After some gear getting, we dive back down into the caves in another search for the ruins. We want to find them in order to take another ancient guardian out. Unfortunately, we run into a spider queen, but luckily we have no real problem taking her out. As these guys are pretty easy without their army. After some more searching, we find a huge mushroom biome, with many of each type of mushroom and mush tree, but unfortunately, no ruins. Before we knew it, the day chime was there and day 76 was upon us. And while we continued our search for the ruins, we unfortunately had no luck before the spiders began to wake up and we had to retreat. Tactically, of course, guys. You know we wouldn't retreat out of being a coward. Why would we? <laughs> it's not like those spiders were terrifying or anything. After our retreat, we do find a set piece of an abandoned base, which provides us with really not much. And then after that, we return home to end off the night. On day 77, we decided to start clearing out our 100 days survived tribute area. And after some contemplating, we decided to settle on the Maxwell statue south of our base. In order to clear this area, however, we used some hired help in the form of rock lobsters to help evict some particularly aggressive fish people. The merms, however, did not go quietly into that good night, as a hound attack struck later that night, which we sent to our rock lobster friends to handle, and they did a great job. Very proud of those guys. After that, we did a little decorating of the Day 100 tribute area, adding the spider hats we acquired from the spider queens we have killed, a siesta lean-to, and a tent. Ending Day 77. On day 78, I forgot a vital rule. Rock lobsters, they eat minerals. And what are gems? Bingo. This guy ate one of my purple gems, and this thus ruined my plans for decorating and I had to figure out a way to get them out of the area. After spending the entire day doing just that, as this guy would not stop following me, we returned later that evening to add even more finishing touches, a blue gem, a red gem, and both of our trusty gnomes, told you guys these guys would be important later on, ending day 78. Day 79 didn't have much going on for it. We started the day by adding a purple gem, which is the same gem we lost to a rock lobster, to the Maxwell, Maxwell statue area, as well as our umbrella, and we even added four pieces of Thulsite. After that, we decided we really wanted a Krampus sack to show off in our tribute area. So, what you guys are going to see right here is what I'd like to call Hardcore Krampus Farming Mode. So, enjoy that.
It was now day 86. Unfortunately, we had to take a small break from Krampus farming. Although the gambler within me hated it, we needed to gather more supplies. So we killed a werepig, and we took down some spider nests for some silk. Unfortunately, one spider nest really didn't like being broken, and the minute it broke, a spider queen decided to spawn. We retreated home because we did not have the proper supplies to take her out and prepared to take this one out for good. We were not failing again in the same exact area. No siree, we were not. It was now day 87 and we had some pest management to do. We armed ourselves with a trusty dark sword and made our way over to fight the Spider Queen. The battle was underwhelming. I believe the reason we failed the one before summer is that we actually did not commit to killing her allowing her to raise too large of an army. A queen without an army is easy pickings. We then spent the remainder of the day preparing for another epic Krampus farming montage. Enjoy. Welcome to the last 10 days, everyone. We're in the final days now, and as you guys saw, we did move our Krampus farming zone in the middle of the montage there. This was an attempt to not be hit with a Mac Tusk raiding party, since he now was only a nuisance and no longer a valuable target. We already got our walking cane. We already got what we needed. We spent this day mostly cooking and doing some inventory management as we prepared to enter our final winter. Our final winter was here. These next few days would be mostly played defensively and mostly decorating our tribute area, which is exactly what we did today. We started with a feather hat and then moved our, our umbrella, our eye, oh, such a weird play on words, guys. Umbrella, eyebrella, eh, whatever. And then surrounded it in gold. After this, we dealt with what we assumed would be our final hound attack, ending day 92. Day 93 marked our first snowfall, and after getting jump scared by some pangols and waddling with them for a little bit, we decided to do some more decorating. We put down some more gems to encapsulate Maxwell's statue. We also put down some feathers above the hats and put nightmare fuel in the Thulsite Square. We even added some living logs to the edges to give it a portal vibe, 
since, I don't know, it looked cool to me. We ended it off by adding a campfire, and then after that heading back home to end the day. Day 94, another decorating day. Today we added a tentacle spike and some gears to flaunt our rare items, but after that we simply spent the rest of the day cooking. Not crazy eventful, however, this was day 94 guys, and we were really getting close. So we didn't really want to mess it up anytime soon, now did we? <laughs> day 95 was spent making meatballs and that was it. We were so close to the end that risking our lives for frivolous adventures didn't seem profitable and staying home to hit that 100 day mark would be much more satisfying. So we became home buddies and I, I gotta say, I'm not mad about it guys. <laughs> On day 96, we said hi to the local Pengol population and had what was actually our final hound attack. They stood no chance against the power of the swamp. After that, we ended the day with a good nap. Day 97. Day 97 was a fun one. We spent it watching an epic battle. Go ahead and see for yourself, guys. Yeah, you could tell by now I was getting tired. If you guys didn't know, or if you weren't paying attention in the intro, I don't blame you. It happens. I did this entire recording in one day. Now, if you guys don't know, obviously, one Don't Starve day is eight minutes. Now, this doesn't account for time when you're paused, or time when you're skipping, because of course we did skip more of summer than we actually played. But... Let's just say I had started recording around 10 in the morning. By now, it was 2.30 in the morning. I was tired, guys. I was tired, and I just... Anything at that moment fascinated me, and for some reason that fight was just absolutely fascinating to me. I don't know why. <laughs> man. Then, as you guys obviously saw, we went home, and from there on, we ended the day exhausted from the epic battle we had just witnessed. On day 98, our tent just went poof. However, we decided to make a straw roll and to spend our last active day running around, we decided to take a hike around our world. I'll go ahead and show you guys a nice sped up version of that as well. Wasn't too eventful, obviously. Day 99. This was it. The final day. We finished off our decorations as soon as we were ready, and in the end, this is what we had. Right here, what you guys see, this is our final area. This is the dusk right before the big day itself, as nothing really interesting happened on day 99. We actually stood around the tribute area and waited to see if anything would happen, if deer collapse maybe came, if I mean, because this would have been around the day he would have came, so, you know. However, nothing decided to mess with us. It was giving it to us. And eventually, we waited for daytime. And it was here. Day 100. Challenge completed. It felt so good to finally get that done after recording this for an entire day. You guys don't understand. Hello everyone. This is me after editing this monstrosity of a video, and I just want to say thank you. Yeah, you. You consumed hopefully the entirety of this video, and for that I will be forever grateful. This video alone took me an insane amount of time, 
It was my first large editing project, so if there was anything you liked or think I lacked on, please leave a comment down below. Criticism is very welcome and will help me grow as a content creator. Want to know what else will help me grow as a content creator? Subscribing and making sure to hit that like button. I don't ask a lot in my videos, but it really does mean a lot to me and it keeps me motivated to continue to produce daily content for you guys to enjoy. That wraps this video up. Thank you all so much again, and I hope you enjoyed my very first highly edited video. Making history here, guys. And don't forget, the unedited version will be releasing daily starting tomorrow. See you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.